in the last video, we introduced this concept of impulse uh, as a way to change an object's momentum, but we didn't really use any numbers as part of that. So in this video, I wanna add some numbers to show how you can use impulse to actually calculate a change in momentum. And if you know a change in momentum, you can figure out how its velocity changes. And if you know how the velocity changes, you can figure out any force or time components based on that impulse. So a couple of things, just as a reminder, uh, whereas we used work uh, earlier this unit to change an object's energy, you can use impulse to cause a change in its momentum, either speeding it up or slowing it down, based on this equation here, that the impulse uh, is calculated the force times the change in the time, and that results in a change in your momentum. We also talked about how you can uh, use this idea of impulse uh, to analyze an object that is slowing down. Uh, so in that case, we looked at a truck with the same mass moving at the same velocity. So it impacts either a wall or a stack of hay and ultimately has the same impulse because it had the same momentum to begin with. We just changed how the force and the time were playing together to produce that impulse. So either a short time large force or long time short force. We can also look at this uh, for an object speeding up and we looked at it in terms of a marshmallow shooter here where the force was the same, um, the mass was the same. So if we were changing the time, we were ultimately changing its velocity. The longer the barrel, uh, the more time the force was imparting for. Uh, so the larger the change in velocity on the other side. So now let's look at it with some numbers here. Um, we have a hockey puck that has a mass of 0.115 kilograms. Uh, the player takes a slap shot with it exerts a force of 31 newtons and that isn't actually instantaneous it's actually in contact with the the stick because the stick flexes a little bit so it's in contact for about 0.15 seconds really short but not infinitely short how fast will the puck be moving well this idea of impulse and momentum are is really important here for us we know that the initial momentum and the final momentum are different uh, we're going to assume that this puck had no initial momentum. It was starting from rest um, and then had some final momentum. Well, the way that we get there is through adding impulse. So in this case, we know that that initial momentum again is zero kilograms me times meters per second. If I want to figure out what my final momentum is, I need to know the impulse. Um, impulse is calculated force times a change in time or force times the time that that force is acting. Uh, in this case, we have 31 newtons for 0.15 seconds. So we can calculate that out to be about 4.65 uh, kilogram meters per second or newton seconds, um, whichever you prefer. Well, that is going to give us our final momentum because we're adding that onto whatever this initial momentum was. Um, so we know our final momentum is now 4.65 kilogram meters per second. And that is equal to mass times velocity. Well, the puck has a mass of 0.115 kilograms. So I can find my velocity because it's the only unknown in this equation. And that final velocity is somewhere around 40.4 meters per second. So I was really booking it uh, after that slap shot. So again, what we did here is we found the impulse to know how our momentum changed. And knowing that the initial momentum was zero, we were able to figure out that the impulse was equal to the final momentum, setting that equal to MV we solved for V. We can also look at this um, in terms of just a change. Uh, so in this case, we have a 440 Newton motor, the LAM of India's Mars Orbiter spacecraft. It was fired for a duration of 3.968 seconds. Uh, the operation of the spacecraft's main liquid engine was to use uh, for trajectory correction and change the velocity by 2.18 meters per second. What was the mass of the spacecraft? Okay, so we know uh, the force of the engine. We know how long it was on for. And we know um, what the change in velocity was. So we need to figure out the mass. In this case, same idea, the initial momentum, adding impulse gives you a final momentum. Well, here, we know the enough information to find impulse again. Impulse is force times time, or 440 times 3.968 to give us 1,746 kilogram meters per second. Well, that is gonna be the difference between 
uh, the initial and the final momentum. So I can just say that the change in momentum is that. Because in this case, we're not actually looking for a velocity. We're, we're given how much the velocity changes. To understand this, uh, it's important to look at this in terms of what change in momentum actually means. So a change in momentum, uh, you could change it by either changing the mass or changing the velocity. In this case, it's the exact same spacecraft. It, it's maybe going to lose a little bit of mass when the motor is turned on. Uh, but the mass is relatively constant here. So really the only thing we're changing is velocity. So the change in momentum results in mass times the change in our velocity. Well, what we know from this uh, problem is that the change in velocity was 2.18. So we can find that the mass is about 801 kilograms. When you are solving these, uh, direction is going to really matter. If we're um, bouncing a ball off of a wall and it loses some of its uh, overall speed, we assume that um, u in this case is 30 meters per second to the left and v is 10 meters per second to the right. What is the change in its velocity? Well, it's important to factor in that these are moving in different directions. So if you want to do it in terms of sign, you could say, all right, one's a negative 30 and one's 10. Or you can just think of it in the fact that, all right, it came to a stop and then turned around and went the opposite direction. Regardless, the change in velocity is not 20. The change in velocity is actually, oh, that's pretty cool, 40 meters per second, um, because the difference between negative 30 and 10 is 40. Um, so the change factors in that direction. And where this is important is for a problem like hitting a baseball with a baseball bat. Um, you have a 500 gram baseball moving to the left at 20 meters per second, striking a bat. The bat is in contact with the ball for 0 0.002 seconds, and it leaves in the opposite direction at 40 meters per second. What was the average force on the ball? So as we did before, initial momentum, adding impulse gives you final momentum. We actually have some information here to find the initial momentum. Um, the mass, 500 grams, turns to 0.5 kilograms is e are multiplied by the velocity. In this case, I'm going to say that moving left is 20. Um, it doesn't matter in this scenario. We just need to know that we can't treat it in necessarily in the same direction as that 40 meters per second. So to keep me straight, I'm going to say left is negative, which gives me a negative 10 kilogram meters per second um, for my initial momentum. As we saw in our conservation of momentum video, um, it is possible to have a negative momentum. It just moves. It means it is an object moving in the negative direction. Well, my final momentum is the mass times the final velocity, or 0.5 times 40. I'm going to keep this one positive because it's moving in the opposite direction, which means I have a final momentum of about 20 kilogram meters per second. The impulse added has to equal this change. Um, so looking at my delta here, my change in momentum is 30 kilogram meters per second because I have not only changed my speed, I have changed my direction as well. So the difference between these is 30. So if I know that difference is 30 and the difference is equal to the impulse, force times time will give me the impulse. I know the time is 0 0.002. So I can find um, ultimately what my force is going to be because force times 0 0.002 has to equal this change, this momentum change that we saw from the initial to the final speed of the baseball. Uh, solving for F, we get a whopping 15,000 newtons of force for a very short duration of time, but long enough to produce this change in my momentum. We can also calculate impulse from a graph. We saw this in the last video when we introduced impulse but we can use that with numbers to solve for a change in velocity as well. So say we have this hamster rocket. Um, the hamster plus the rocket has a mass of about half a kilogram uh, and a variable force here shown in this graph. So the engine turns on full force and then it kind of throttles down until it hits 10 seconds. What is the final velocity after 10 seconds if it starts from rest? Looking at what I have here, um, my general process so far has been to look at this picture. The initial momentum plus some impulse gives me a final momentum. Uh, what I know is that my 
impulse is going to be found by taking the area bounded by this graph because the area of a graph is the y times the x. Um, and y times x is force times time. In this case, it's based one half base times height. So one half times 10 times eight will give us uh, an impulse here of 40 Newton seconds. So the impulse added is 40. It started from rest. So my initial momentum is zero, which means that my final momentum has to be 40. Uh, and if I know the final momentum, I can find the, the final velocity because I know the mass and momentum is just mass times velocity. Momentum is mass times velocity. 40 is equal to 0.5 kilograms times whatever the velocity is. Solving for V, I get about 80 meters per second. So that adorable little hamster in his rocket. Um, after this 10 seconds of a throttle up, throttle down sort of force, we'll be going roughly 80 meters per second. All right. This last problem, I would like you to try it on your own. Um, so Kara Les was applying her makeup when she drove into South's busy parking lot last Friday morning. Unaware that Lisa Ford was stopping in her lane, Kara rear-ended Lisa's rental car. Kara's 1,300 kilogram car was moving at five meters per second and stopped in 0.4 seconds. What was the force? All right, hopefully you've had a chance to try that. Uh, this is my general picture. Initial momentum converts to final momentum based on my impulse, changing the momentum. What I'm given here is a mass and a velocity to begin with and a time of the impact. So I know that my initial momentum can be calculated mass times velocity or 1,300 times five, or to give me 6,500 kilogram meters per second. I know that the final momentum is just zero because I came to a stop. So the impulse is whatever the change is there. When the change is 6,500. Um, I'm not going to worry too much about positive negative here. Uh, I know that this impulse has to have a force counteracting the motion because it is slowing down and coming to a stop. So if this impulse is at 6,500 um, kilogram meters per second, and that has to equal the force times time as impulse does, I can find the force. Force is just 6,500 divided by 0.4, which is 16,250 newtons. All right, from this lesson, you should be able to calculate uh, for an unknown force uh, if you know it's change in momentum. You should also be able to calculate if you know a force and a time, how the momentum changes and calculate an unknown velocity. You should be able to calculate the change in velocity if there's a direction change. Uh, noting positive, negative, if that is helpful for you, or just factoring in that it slowed down and then accelerated in the opposite direction. And you should be able to calculate a change in momentum from a force versus time graph like we did with that hamster rocket.